guys, it's Janosta, you welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to discuss uh, the new Batman movie. I actually just came back from the movie theater and wow, it was amazing. So first of all, I actually wanted to do a live so badly, but the movie was so long and it's kind of late and I'm and I'm very sure that most of my subscribers are kind of like good GG. So I'm sure they went to bed early. <laughs> I felt it was a little bit too late. Maybe next time. I have to organize myself. I really want to do a live one day. Maybe it's too early. We'll see. We'll, we'll get it done one day. Uh, but anyway, I really wanted to just sit down and talk about this movie and give my first impressions. There's not going to be a lot of spoilers, I hope, but just be cautious. This is a not completely no spoiler review. So like I said, just be cautious if you haven't seen the movie. So it is a DC movie. DC movies tend to look grayish, foggy. Uh, there's a lot of uh, noir themes. So, so it looks like a noir movie in certain ways, uh, which is perfect for Batman. It reminds me of the original Batman. So the one with, um, what's the name of that? I could, you know, the original Batman. And with Tim Burton's Batman, I'm referring to. And actually, there was a point in the movie in the beginning when I, I think I'm hearing this, the sound of the music. The, I don't know, there's a particular sound that, that is so um, resembling Batman. In the beginning, you can hear it. And as soon as you hear it, I'm like, oh my God, that's Batman. Like, I finally recognize it. Christopher Nolan's lacked that. It didn't have the motif. I never heard it, but this one had it. They captured it. It's from Tim Martin's soundtrack. I didn't hear that in the other movies, but in this one I heard it, even for a brief period of time, but I heard it. When it comes to the characters, they're also very much coming from a noir movie. They're all in black, they're very dark. Um, I like the fact that even uh, Batman, uh, Robert Pattinson has some black in his eyes. Anytime he wears this mask, he lives this, like, this darkness around his eyes. That's a feature that I absolutely love it's like a mark left on his face almost like it's if the shadow never leaves him so that's a good um uh, it has symbolic value to it even the make of it which is amazing i do feel he did an awesome job it was totally credible believable um he seemed like a very young batman like he's a very young actor so he doesn't have the maturity that of course the actors who preceded him have in terms of um, the seriousness. Um, however, he's really trying. You can see this the the attempt to be as serious as possible. But you look at him and he's the more instead of seriousness, I do see more torture and melan melancholic. I see this melancholic nature uh, to it uh, more so than seriousness. You know what I mean? Like, just because of the young nature, and he's almost like a tortured young soul. That's the kind of the image that I, he was portraying. But when any time he was wearing, and that's when he was not wearing the mask. And then when he was wearing the mask, he was completely transformed. He was absolutely feared. And I think they try to make you be fearful of him and um, be scared of him to and to be in the like in the position of the criminals that he was facing um so that was uh, kind of uh an interesting take and absolutely something that is a replica of the previous movies the movies that you know all the batman movies try to do that make batman this fearful figure especially christopher nolan's movies um this dark dark batman even by the voice now he has a dark voice like a very girly voice but not as much in the um, of the Batman and Christopher Nolan's movies um, and I think it's done on purpose and um, the reason why Batman has this voice I mean I thought it was to, to kind of like um, hide who he was as part of his persona his masquerade right but um, I feel in this movie was done in a very natural way his voice was actually not as much different and when he was Bruce Wayne he barely talked though like he barely said anything while as Batman he did talk a lot like he did really state his opinion and helped and uh, yeah he expressed himself pretty well when more so than when he was with like Bruce Wayne he had 
trouble communicating, and it was almost like gazing a lot, looking a lot, looking, observing a lot. So I found that very much appealing, and I love the hair that he had. Um, it just the entire image was interesting of Bruce Wayne. Um, he lacked a little bit the Bruce Wayne that's mostly like cocky and. Uh, uh, proud of himself, himself, like confident. Like he didn't have that yet. Like he seemed like more so a melancholic and tortured, uh, dark prince. You know. So hopefully we're going to see that in the future. And I think this is a young Batman still. Um, then I do love that Catwoman that we have. So the Catwoman in this movie, she's very pretty, she's young, and uh, she's dark, and uh, she's also very much troubled girl. Um, and uh, like I said, she's very sophisticated also. She had a nice uh, peel, and also she had a great chemistry with Robert Pattinson, which is good, even though we saw very little, but we saw a glimpse of what maybe what's to come. And I think they had a great chemistry together. They even looked nice together. They have similar facial features, uh, like on the, the bones, you know. And Robert Pattinson, by the way, has a beautiful lines of his face. And they're absolutely um, shining through the mask. And I think they're so identifiable. I don't even know how they cannot see that it's him. Just because of how these cheekbones like are so pronounced. They're beautiful. But anyway, I think with the mask, they're so they're so visible and pronounced it just it makes it look like so manly you know so that's absolutely beautiful image i'm stuck with gotham's jim gordon um ben what's his last name i don't remember but you know uh, i'm a true fan of gotham i've watched that show so many times it's such a beautiful show and uh, um i love jim gordon there and i love him here he was really good i love this actor he's a very famous actor and i didn't mind him at all he was very he was much a good person it was just a good man which is the way Jim Gordon has always been very dignified very honorable uh, doesn't take any glory just does his job and protected people uh, there's one thing that I noticed in this movie that in other movies uh, in other Batman movies I never saw which is the connection between Batman and the people of Gotham in this movie I do see a care and a connection and a wanting to connect to the people of Gotham more so than in the other movies in the other movies I more so I had to, a feeling that Batman had the most connection to Gordon the police you know for the police force and the villains while in this particular movie I think the connection to the people of Gotham is the most important connection that he has and the one that he treasures the most besides Catwoman obviously Selina but which are the people of Gotham are at the, at the core of his um, mission and, and besides you know maintaining the legacy of his parents and I always found that the mystery of it, the, his parents death um the, quite fascinating because we really don't have a straight answer who the guilty person was the person who murdered um his parents of course in the original Batman Tim Barton's version we have a killer we had that has been unveiled but in the other movies it's a little bit unclear we don't really know as much information um so it's quite interesting and hopefully maybe Maybe in this movie, in this version of Batman, we can have an answer who killed, um, you know, Bruce Wayne's parents. I would like to like I would like to have a clear answer because they kind of change in the movies. It's not always the same answer, and sometimes we don't really have one. Then there's a big revelation towards the end. Of course, the Riddler. Uh, this is a big spoiler. There is an appearance of the Joker. We don't actually see him in full like full face. We see his hair, his nose, some of the features, his skin over here. Like we do see some features uh, through a window um, of his door. You know, of his chamber. And he's discussing or talking to the Riddler. As soon as he started talking, I knew it was the Joker. So, oh, who's the Joker? That's the Joker. And he didn't even have to start laughing. The voice, the attitude, the words, what he was saying, the type of discourse, the, the type of mentality. That's the Joker. So that was absolutely beautifully captured. I love that. I hate when the Joker has to be recognized by the laugh only. The Joker was more than just a laugh. The laugh was just a characteristic. And of course, there's so many types of laughs. There's a, a more hysterical laugh. There's more like a, a sadistic laugh. Uh, there's a funny laugh, something that's actually funny. And um, so, yes, there's different types of laugh. And that laugh was more hysterical. And... Um, 
and it kind of predicts that Propoli is going to be one of the main villains, if not the main villain in the ne next installment. It seems like uh, the actor uh, that was shown in this movie will be the actor that will play the Joker. So it seems like they hired him already. So he was chosen. And I actually saw him. He's a Irish actor, I believe. So I think he has some type of reddish hair. And I love when they pick characters that, like for the Joker that have like red hair. I always feel like I love the Joker in Gotham. Uh, a part of it also because his his hair, his features, it just the it's he's perfect, the voice, everything. Um his name is Cameron Monahan, is the actor portrayed the Joker. Kind of the Joker. He had many personas of the Joker, but many versions of the Joker, but he played the Joker in that um in that show. And I hope that this Joker is going to resemble the performance of that actor Cameron Monahan just because or well, at least the style of it. Or one or because you know Cameron Monaghan in the Gotham series if you haven't watched it please do it's amazing I would have reacted with him but I watch it so many times it's not worth it um but um he portrayed different versions of the Joker and I really hope at least one of the most modern um uh, version is going to be portrayed in this movie I think it will blend well uh in the Batman in this Batman series and also with Robert Pattinson's performance just because Robert Pattinson's performance is very obscure is very melancholic is very dark is there's not nothing funny about it it's very sad and compelling and you really want to include a little bit of humor dark humor uh, in it and I really hope that that will be brought by the Joker it's going to be interesting because I don't know the origins of the Joker are such a mystery so we don't really know exactly how he came to be in this particular movie you know he's in Arkham the Arkham Asylum that's the only thing we know and we don't know if we met that man or if he knows about him probably does like we don't know much he just so we had that interaction in the movie just as a premonition of what's going to happen it's like an alert okay is coming you guys so it's just to to make us uh, you know excite us for the next installment which it did i love that interaction with the riddler there was a lot of fights and there was a lot of yeah so a lot of the bombings destruction amazing amazing amazingly done especially the fight scenes were amazing i think they were more realistic you could feel the pain you could feel the, the punches you could feel everything and like hear everything so it was much clear uh, much more clear than maybe in other movies and in that it re this movie resembles Christopher Nolan's movies uh, Christopher Nolan's movies have some topic they're very tech savvy like they're a lot into the technology that Batman used and the money they used for like you know that aspect the financial aspect they all they highlight that aspect of uh, Batman's life in this movie they kind of touch upon that about the grandiosity and the you know the glorified uh, financial resources that he has you know um but um but yes it's uh, it's pretty much focused on people's interactions like re in relationships which i love i absolutely give it a positive review i absolutely encourage you to watch it it's a long movie and honestly i didn't slip in one minute every superhero movie that i went to watch the movie dear i slept through it unfortunately even the spider-man half of the movie i think i watched it I mean, I fell asleep the first half and then I woke up the second half when I saw, you know, the bet, the nice part, you know, you know what part I'm talking about. But, you know, I have, I call it the superhero sleep alert. I always fall asleep. I have some allergy um, against um, these superhero movies or Marvel movies or whatever they are. Um, not that they're not good movies, it's just they make me fall asleep. I don't know why too many fight scenes, uh, many punches, this sound, it kind of like annoys me. In this movie, it was more balanced, uh, even though there was a lot of fights, but it was they were done well they were absolutely done well i guess the choreographies were were great and i it captured my attention it kept me very much attentive throughout the movie throughout the three hours which is amazing that means it's really good at least for my standards anyway let me know what you guys thought of this movie i would like to know your thoughts let me know your reactions to it and um, i'll see you guys next time bye